This question, we're solving for x, but we're really going to solve for cosine x first. And this has a cosine squared in it. If this had mixed cosines and sines, I would have to change them all to sines or cosines. And the way you do that is you're always going to change the square term. For this one, I would use cos squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x to turn it into a sine. Luckily, we have cosine and cosine, so this is totally unnecessary here. So you won't need this uh, Pythagorean identity, but some of the similar questions, you will need it. All right, let's go ahead and rewrite this. I'm wrapping these in parentheses. This one's already solved for zero. Uh, you're gonna find a lot of these are not solved for zero, so you're gonna need to solve for zero. So why are we doing this? You should think of this as eight y squared minus two y minus one equals zero, where y equals cos x. And how do we solve this? Well, we'll try to factor and get lucky. Maybe we can get an 8y and a y. I don't think that'll work. Let's try a 4y and a 2y. I think this will work. So we need a negative on one of them and a positive on the other. So that'll multiply and make negative 1. Uh, the inside-outside terms is 4y minus 2y, which would be a plus 2y. So this signs need to flip. And then we have it right there. So this is a factor I'm going to use. So bringing this back here, just replace y with cos x. Okay, so zero product property means that either one of these zero product product property all right either one of these is zero or two cos x minus one equals zero okay we'll just go do the one on the left first so subtract one divide by four, uh, or, so we'll add one and then divide by two. Okay, so let's do the easy one first, cos x equals a half. Uh, where does that happen on the unit circle? Uh, that's cos x is a w x value, so there's one half x value. There's two places this happens on the unit circle. Right there, should have definitely drawn the circle a bit bigger. We'll zoom in, something you can't do on paper. So there's two angles here that have an x coordinate of one half. How do we get these? Well, you should have these remembered. The one in the first quadrant will be pi over three. That'll be the angle right here. All right, the other angle, it's tempting to say it's negative pi over three. However, somewhere up in the original problem, it said don't use negative angles right here. So they must be between zero and two pi. So we're gonna need to name that in a positive way and we can't go past two pi. All right, so once we have this drawn out, we're gonna go that direction and that will be well, it's everything, it's six pi over three, come back pi over three. So that's five pi over three. All right, so those are two x values. Now up here, I've redacted the answer. Let's go ahead and take that out. All right, which one of these is five pi over three? It must be this right here. So let's get a calculator out. I need pi. So that's the approximation for pi times 5 divided by 3 
There we go. That's that first 5.2359, etc. Um, I'm going to leave my answer as uh, pi. Uh, and if we do five, uh, pi over 3, divided by 3, oh, not pi over 3. Oh, that's five divided by three. That's why. Divided by three equals, there we go. That's that one right there, the third answer. All right, we're gonna get the other two, but they're not gonna be nice multiples of pi. And I know that because I can already tell right here, we don't have a, a one fourth on our unit circle normally. So, there of course is an angle that gets to one fourth. One fourth right there. There's actually two angles between zero and pi. Uh, unfortunately, we can't get them directly. So I'm gonna call this first one theta. And we're gonna take the cosine inverse. of both sides. So it's cos inverse negative one fourth equals theta. And I absolutely drew my angles on the wrong side. Should have a negative one fourth as our x value. Wow, that's a bad circle. So that's negative one fourth. So there'll be two angles here. All right, when I take a uh, cos inverse, I'm gonna get this angle here. I'll get the one in quadrant two. So that'll be theta right there. Cosine inverse is gonna be some ugly decimal. So I'm just gonna call it theta. Now, how do we get the other one? The other one's a little bit more tricky. There's a few ways to get it. I'll call it theta two for the second theta. So there's a few ways to do this. One thing to notice, this angle right here is theta. So that means theta two plus theta equals two pi. So theta two equals two pi minus theta, which is again, is that ugly fraction you're gonna get, or ugly decimal you're gonna get on the previous step. And you just fill that value in. And one of them is going to be the first decimal, one's the second decimal. I can already tell the small one. The first one's gonna be the quadrant two angle and the 4.45 is gonna be the quadrant three angle. And that's how you can get all four of these here.